words, English words. Well, My aunt, Mary Beton, I must tell you, died by a fall from her horse when she was riding out to take the air in Bombay. The news of my legacy reached me one night about the same time that the act was passed that gave votes to women. A solicitor's letter fell into the post box and when I opened it I found that she had left me 500 pounds a year forever. Of the two, the vote and the money, the money I owed seemed infinitely the more important. Before that, I had made my living by catching odd jobs from newspapers, by reporting a donkey show here or a wedding there. I had earned a few pounds by addressing envelopes. Addressing, by addressing envelopes. By addressing words, words. English words. Full of English English words. words. I had earned a few pounds by addressing envelopes, reading to old ladies, making artificial flowers, teaching the alphabet to small children in a kindergarten. Such were the chief occupations that were open to women before 1918. I need not, I am afraid, describe in any detail the hardness of the work, for you know, perhaps, perhaps women who have done it, nor the difficulty of living on the money when it was earned, for you may have tried, tried. But what still remains but what still remains with me as a worse infliction than that? But what still remains with me as a worse infliction than either was the poison of fear and bitterness which those days bred in me. To begin with, always to be doing work that one did not wish to do, and to do it like a slave, flattering and fawning. Not always necessarily, perhaps, but it seemed necessary, and the stakes were too great to run risks. And then the thought of that one gift which it was death to hide, a small one, but dear to the possessor, perishing, and with it myself, my soul. All this became like a rust, a rust, a rust eating away at the bloom of the spring destroying the tree at its heart. However, as I say, my aunt died. And whenever I change a ten shilling note, a little of that rust and corrosion is rubbed off. Fear and bitterness go. Indeed, I thought, slipping the silver into my purse, it is remarkable, remembering the bitterness of those days, what a change of temper a fixed income will bring about. No force in the world can take from me my 500 pounds. Food, house and clothing are mine forever. Therefore, not merely do effort and labors, therefore, not merely do effort and labor cease, but also hatred and bitterness, and bitterness and bitterness. Therefore, not merely do effort and labor cease, but also hatred and bitterness. I need not hate any man, he cannot hurt me. I need not flatter any man, he has nothing to give me. So imperceptibly I found myself adopting a new attitude towards the other half of the human race. It was absurd to blame any class or any sex as a whole. Great bodies of people are never responsible for what they do. They are driven by instincts which are not within their control. They too, the patriarchs, the professors, 
They too. Words, words. English words, English words. 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 echoes, memories, associations. They've been out for a while on people's lips, in their houses, in the streets. They too, the patriarchs, the professors, had endless difficulties terrible drawbacks to contend with. Their education had been in some ways as faulty as my own. It had bred in them defects as great. True, true, they had money and power, but only at the cost of harboring in their breasts an eagle, a vulture, forever tearing the liver out, liver out, and plucking at the lungs, the instinct for possession, the rage for acquisition which drives them to desire other people's fields and goods perpetually, to make frontiers and flags, battleships and poison gas, to offer up their own lives and their children's lives. Walk through the Admiralty Arch, I have reached that monument, or any other avenue, avenue given up to trophies and cannon, and reflect upon the kind of glory celebrated there. Or watch the spring sunshine, or watch in the spring sunshine the stockbroker and the great barrister going indoors to make money and more money and more money, when it is a fact that 500 pounds a year will keep one alive in the sunshine. These are unpleasant instincts to harbor, I reflected. They are bred of the conditions of life, of the lack of civilization, I thought, looking at the statue of the Duke of Cambridge, and in particular at the feathers in his cocked hat with a fixity that they have scarcely ever received before. And as I realized these drawbacks, and as I realized these drawbacks, by degrees fear and bitter and as I realized these drawbacks, by degrees fear and bitterness modified themselves into pity and toleration. And then in a year or two, pity and toleration went. And the greatest release of all came, which is freedom to think of things in themselves. That building, for example, do I like it or not? Is that picture beautiful? or not? Is that, in my opinion, a good book or a bad? Indeed, my aunt's legacy unveiled the sky to me and substituted for the large and imposing and substituted for the large and imposing figure of a gentleman which Milton recommended for my perpetual adoration, a view of the open sky. Sky. Open. The. Off. View. 